It's the first of September. I greet you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Before I arrived back in 2015, I sent a letter to the staff. I asked them a bunch of questions. I'm only going to share a few with you right now, but you're welcome to see the letter at some point. In fact, I think it might be helpful for you to know what my understanding was when I arrived. I was given a mission that came through the call committee, came through the congregation council, and I believe it was the vision that was cast to me by the members of this congregation. So it's been my privilege, my honor to pursue that relentlessly since my arrival. I wrote in the letter to the staff, how would you describe your prayer life? And they responded. I wrote, who do you say I am? Jesus asked. So thinking that's a pretty good question, if Jesus asked it, I ask that of the staff. Who do you say God is? Who do you say Jesus is? And they responded. I closed the letter with Paul's counsel. Choose where you set your mind. Set it on that which is true and honorable, just and sure, pleasing and commendable. And perhaps renewing your mind is going to be absolutely essential. For us to embrace a new way of anything, we have to sometimes reorganize, restructure our mind, get our mind connected with our heart, our mind and our heart connected with our bellies. You can feel it. It's palpable. A congregation set ablaze by the Holy Spirit, you know something's happening. You might not understand it. You might not know what the outcome is going to be. And if you're lucky, you really don't. You just trust. You have hope. You have faith. You believe. I believe that hope begins where we choose to look. I believe hope that can't look fully and honestly into the face of reality. It's not worthy to be called hope. Tell me about the future that you hope will happen here at St. John's. That's what I ask the staff. And that's what I ask of you to consider a different way to define vision. Churches predominantly have seen vision as a few leaders those that have this special knack or special gift, they're the ones that cast the vision and somehow we're all supposed to jump on board and embrace it. I don't believe in that. I believe that vision isn't something that's out there and we set the target and we shoot for it. I believe vision actually propels us. And that's why I wrote what I did the other day. Uh, propulsion is possible. That's why I talked about bicycle wheels and how a company designed them to actually move the airspace in a way that it propels us forward. That's the vision I see in scripture. The vision I see in scripture is one that trusts that God has a future for us in Jesus Christ, and that God promises to be with us and gives us the confidence to engage our current realities, our current circumstances. This is not pie in the sky time. This is look right into the face of reality and have hope. Hope is emerging. It's in our context, not only here at St. John's, but it's in Boyertown and it's in our surrounding areas. It's in our country. I know some would say, not so much. I disagree. I think in the midst of chaos, in the midst of conflict, in the midst of strikingly opposite opinions and views, hope is always in the midst because God is in the midst and God is at work. God's at work in you. I hope you found this helpful. Challenge your assumptions. Believe in the possibilities that God wants to reorganize your thinking. Motivate you to do what matters for God's sake, for your sake, for everyone's sake. Be blessed.